Hey there, what's up? Welcome to Frames TM and today we'll discuss the video features, the frame rates, the codecs and file sizes and all those things uh, of the Z6 III. I think uh, um, as much as people know about the Z6 III, I think there are a few things that people are not fully clear about. So I thought it's quite interesting to actually talk about all the file codecs and what you get and the frame rates and all that that you get there so let's start with and by the way if you're new here subscribe to the channel help me reach 6000 subscribers so let's start with the file type we'll choose a file type and see with that file type what kind of frame rate and size is available as in is it 4k is it full hd is it 6k and what fps that's what we are actually looking at so the moment you click ok on um, nrow 10 bit nev you can shoot that in both SDR and NLog, they're both the same, you can choose any. It'll tell you that, you know, frame rate and size may change because not everything is available uh, in, in a 12 bit NRAW. So let's see what is available. So if you go right up, you'll see, we can shoot in NRAW. It is full frame all the way down to um, 6K 50, 30, 25 and 24 and that is very good. Just below that you see one thing is missing. Now we get into 4K but there is no 4K 120 frames per second. So you're not getting that. You're not getting full frame 4K 120 uh, in NRAW. 12 bit NRAW. What you're getting is 4K 60 but then it is FX full frame. That's good. That's good for most situations. Okay. So you can shoot at you know 50, 30, 24 and 25 frames per second after that you actually get 4k 120 frames per second with nrow 12 bit but you get a dx crop uh, by the way the same for photos you will get 112 frames per second shots but you can shoot that fast in stills uh, with the dx crop so 4k dx 120 frames per second 12 bit raw all right from there you get 100 frames 60 frames 50 30 and 24 and 25 that's really really good okay what you're not getting here remember you're not getting full uh, you're not getting full frame full hd or 1080p here that's what's missing here okay we are starting with 6k and are coming down to 4k and 4k dx then so let's see what we're going to get with the next option which is ProRes RAW HQ422 again a fantastic file much easier for most computers to read but then it's a bigger file as in the bitrate is higher the file sizes are higher NRAW is a more compressed uh, file format so because of the nature of it we know that the camera will have to process a lot more data all right so which means at this point if you have forgotten please subscribe okay which means that um that it the camera may not be able to process all the information so let's see what we are missing here and what you're getting here again frame size and rate may change so what you're getting here is uh you're getting 6k but you're not getting 6k 60 you're getting 6k 30 and all the way from there down to 6k 24 then you're getting all full frame you're also getting full frame 4k 60 um so you're compromising on 6k 60 but you're getting the 30 25 and 24 in 6k raw 12 bit pro rays easy to play on most computers okay and there are some computers that can handle the n raw 12 bit smaller file size squeezed and more encrypted possibly and if you have those kind of laptops and computers you're lucky you can shoot in n raw and I think you should upgrade to the MacBooks, the recent MacBooks. Okay, you're getting full frame 4K 60 still here in ProRes RAW 12 bit. And from there all the way down to 24 frames per second in 4K full frame. After that, you get DX crop, but then you again shoot 4K 60 and all the way down to DX 4k 24 so the benefit of having dx is that if you want to shoot you want to crop in if especially if you're shooting video and you want to get that extra reach and you want to really zoom in and see the details of that bird or that tiny little creature that's going to be really really helpful here with that 4k raw uh, dx crop and 60p will give you enough slow, slow motion in most situations if you want more slow motion it's uh, higher frame rates it's coming on the way Next is ProRes 422 HQ 10-bit. 
This is 422 10-bit. You can shoot in N-Log or in SDR or standard dynamic range. By the way, you're not getting HLG so far and we'll see HLG in the next one. Okay, let's choose ProRes 422HQ 10-bit. So you're getting, let's go up. You're getting 5.4K in 30 frames. And from there all the way down to 24 frames in 5.4K. Hmm. Then you're getting 4K again, the standard 4K at 60 and 50, 30, 24 and 25. After that, for the first time, you get actually full HD 120 frames. This to me is actually useful given the file sizes and the frame rate calculations and compromise. Like if you want higher frame rate, rates, uh, more resolution is not that important. Yeah, you can actually use um, 1080, 120. Because you see, in most cases on social media, you'll probably not really need 4K. So this is not bad at all. Um, so yeah, you can see what you're getting in Full HD or 1080, you're getting 120, 160 and 50. The funny thing is you're not getting 24, 25 and 30. To me, that sounds like a compromise. I would have liked to actually see the basic frame rates in Full HD with ProRes RAW, and, but we're not getting that. See, we're not getting, uh, we haven't got full, we haven't got full as your 1080, 24, 25, and 30, both in NRAW and in ProRes. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's what you're looking for in the next file format. Now, when you choose H265 10 bit, remember you can shoot this in uh, NLog, HLG, and in SDR. And in SDR, you can actually choose the kind of picture profile you actually like from Nikon's color science. You can choose rich tone portrait or neutral or flat. I mean, right, I mostly shoot in flat or in standard. So you can choose that as well. Just cut downs on the work in many situations. It's quite, you know, edit friendly. Also, decent dynamic range, to be honest. So we get this and let's see what else, what is available here. You get 60 frames in 4.5K, all the way from there down to 24 frames in 4.5K. Then you get 4K again at 120 frames. Really good. All the way down to 24 frames per second. But then comes the magic. You get full HD to 240 frames a second. And remember, this is in 10-bit H265. Initially, I was thinking, well, it probably reports say that it doesn't have as good dynamic range as the AS7 IV possibly or even the, the other cameras, Panasonic AS5 II. By the way, here in 24, 250 frames per second in, um, in full HD in 10-bit, you're actually getting 5% uh, crop, only 5%. That's practical. This is not 10%. Like in so many cameras, we have seen a 10% crop. This is not 10%, this is 5%. That's tremendous by Nikon. And I think you also get 10, 5% crop at 200 frames per second. Starting 120 frames, you're not getting crop, it's becoming full frame, all right? So yeah, you get all this and all the way down to 24 frames per second in full HD or 1080. So if you want 1080 as a resolution uh, and you want 24 frames, you have to use H265 10 bit. After that, you still have H265 8-bit and uh, in both MOV and MP4. If you actually choose MP4, let me show you that first. You actually see slow motion. Here, all you have to do is basically shoot it. And then the moment you put it on the timeline, it will automatically be in slow motion. Only thing is that it is in 8-bit. So you don't have to actually change the frame rate and turn it into a slow motion video. It's just play it. It's already in slow motion. Put it, on time, put it on your timeline and start editing. You also get, uh, by the way, H265 8-bit. Now, there again, you get all this. So this is, you choose this when you have, when you like the colors that Nikon picture profiles give you um, and you're, you're kind of confident about the exposure, you're confident about the lighting in the scene, um, you're broadly okay. And you get all of this. You will get, you know, 5.4K and 60 feet, 60p down to 24 frames and then 4k from 120 to 24 frames and everything in between and then you also get in 1080 or full hd 240 frames right down to 24 frames per second 
all right and 240 like i said and 200 is only five percent crop so this is a very interesting camera honestly i was initially a little worried about this because the reports were about this has got a partially stacked sensor so there is a little bit of you know compromise on the dynamic range and also this is not actually a bsi sensor so i was a little little worried but then now i see that this camera is growing on me because i see what nikon has given us in exchange for those small compromises to be honest those now look like small compromises of course if you're looking for the best image quality in raw in uh, in stills you probably should get the z7 II, the zf and the z9 z8 um possibly even the d850 but hey those are older days right i mean you have those options but it's a decent enough file both in stills and in video um so watch those videos where i compare uh, the you know the z6 c with the canon the sony uh, and going for the Panasonic, watch those videos. That's going to be quite interesting uh, for all of us. I mean, even when I'm doing these videos, I'm learning so much about the camera. And in fact, it is during this that actually the camera started to grow on me more than I had anticipated. There's a lot more to discuss about this camera. So subscribe on the channel. Let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of content you want to see going forward. What kind of comparisons, what kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I think the Z6 is going to have a very wide up appeal going forward. So yes, for the third time, subscribe, follow, tell me what you think and follow me. I'm going to see you with another video soon. Okay, bye.